Welcome back to the Morning Blend. Edith Hahn Beer was an Austrian Jewish woman who survived the Holocaust by hiding her identity and marrying a Nazi officer. She kept her life a secret for 50 years. Then, in 1997, when she was 83 years old, she sold her collection of papers at an auction to raise money for an eye operation. Today, her daughter is here to share this story, which is the subject of this book. It is called The Nazi Officer's Wife. Angela Schluter is Edith's daughter, and Rabbi Do uh, Ronald Shapiro is with the congregation Shalom. This weekend, there are two special events to share this incredible story. We're going to tell you about those in just a little bit. But welcome to both of you. Thanks for Thank being you. here Thank on the you. show. Thanks so nice you. to meet you. What a phenomenal story of your mother and, and you as a survivor of it as well. Talk a little bit about um, the book, what she wrote about and, and, and her life and how she kept that secret for so well, long. She kept a secret. She did not talk about it for 50 years. Then when it became public, everybody wanted to have have her write it down. It was my baby. I wanted her to write it down. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so important to show the world that not everybody, not every Nazi was totally terrible. Mm -hmm. there were, there's good in everybody. Mm -hmm. And people helped her who knew nothing about her except they wanted to help a Jew. Even very, very staunch, high-ranking Nazis. And of course my father. He did protect her. He was totally smitten with her. Yeah, he, he, loved fell, her. he fell madly in love with madly her, right? In lo madly in love with her. All right, let's talk a little bit about her story. I'm going to hold up a few pictures as we tell it. So here's a picture of your mom when she was just 19 years old. Yes. Beautiful woman. Yes. Um, not, not what you would think a Nazi officer, though, would fall in love with. You would think they, they would look for some blonde hair and blue-eyed. He adored her. He was, he was blonde and blue-eyed and tall. And she was little and... Brunette and very attractive. And here's a picture of your father. What year is this? This was in 1944. He's in uniform. He was uh, conscripted uh, very late because he worked uh, in Hitler's aircraft factory. He was working for the for Hitler's cause. You said there, there's good in everyone. Did you find him to be a nice man, your father? Not very, but <laughs> my mother had more understanding of him than I did, yes. Okay. Uh, she would never say a bad word about him because he, he protected her. So she, he, he knew her identity? Oh yes, she told him. Okay. She told him he was in love with her before he knew. Uh -huh. And when he then came to Munich to ask her to marry him, she leaned forward and she whispered in his ear, think about it. Mm -hmm. I'm a Jew and I'm living under a false identity. I mean, he was, and then he said, oh, that doesn't matter. I told you lies and you told me lies. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just like that. He actually was, was punished for that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know that he was punished, but he didn't go to the Gestapo. Okay. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he could have done, but she was very, very careful. And when here's they were your birth certificate. Yes. What's, what's extraordinary about this? It has a swastika. Right on the bottom, down, it has down here. a big yep. swastika. And it has my name, my date of birth, 1944. I was born in a Nazi hospital, welcomed by a, a whole group of Nazi doctors who, of course, didn't know. And it's somebody else's name, because my mother had a different identity, is on my birth certificate. Here's a more recent picture of you with your mom. Yes. Um, she Love eventually, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 40s, divorced your yes. dad, yes. and she later remarried. Yes. The, when he came back from Siberia in 1947, he was more aware of her Jewishness, and it, it didn't work out. Uh, they, they were chalk and cheese. They were not, <laughs> yes, as we say, chalk and cheese. <laughs> it, they, they were not together in the sense that she had a boyfriend, she'd had a boyfriend in Vienna called Pepe, Joseph Pepe, and they were soulmates. And this, they were, uh, in Vienna, uh, my father and mother were not soulmates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, well, he wanted, he wanted to remarry his first wife. You have the talk yes. and the discussion um, at the, the congregation Shalom. Why did you want to pair up and, and, and highlight the story, Rabbi? Well, it's an extraordinary story. And it was so unusual for people to survive the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Life expectancy at places like Auschwitz was two weeks. 
So every story is so important to tell because it affirms life. Yeah. And there was a great philosopher who once said, those who don't remember the past are destined to repeat it. And it is so important for each of us always to tell these stories because life is filled with richness and significance and every person who survives has perhaps an obligation to tell the story so that the world can learn that we can't repeat this with any people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's part of our history. Absolutely. Whether you're Jewish, uh, uh, German, whatever you are, it's part of all of our, as a, as, as a, a world, um, it's part of our history. So Angela, you have a book signing that's happening tomorrow at Book World. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. It's on North Port Road in Mequon. Then the conversation um, with you moves over to Congregation Shalom. That's a talk and discussion. That's happening Sunday, this Sunday at 4 p.m. It's free to the public. Um, the congregation is on North Santa Monica in Fox Point. Thanks That's so right. much for thank being you here and so sharing much your story. You're very welcome, and thank you for having me. Great to meet you. Coming